Um, something a little bit different today. Um, I, I get regular emails off Peter, and he sends me a lot of stuff with Tommy Robinson. I've got to admit, um, I'm still trying to understand Tommy Robinson. Um, because the problem you get is some of the stuff he talks about, I understand completely what he's talking about. But at the same time, the media circus are trying to push it another way and are trying to just get a hold of him just to talk to him and get some real feedback from himself and some understanding of his real points. Because a lot of the stuff I find these days is so skewed that the only source that's worth listening to is the original. Everything else I do not trust anymore. Um, when I look at look at the debates on the crypto stuff we've been talking about the last last few videos and the comments around it, you'll get people say it's a scam, it's this, it's that, and other people say it's working wonders for me. And that's the exact thing I'm talking about. You've got the total swing and very little going on in the middle to debate the fact, well, why is it this and why is that? A lot of stuff Tommy Robinson writes about or talks about, I recognize and have done for a long time in the UK. Um, a lot of stuff is very, very skewed, but I'm just trying to understand how he says things should be fixed and why, why he thinks this will be the solutions that, which is why I'm trying to get a hold of him, which gets to my main point. I can't get hold of him. Um, for some reason, we, if you message him on his website, he doesn't actually send the messages through. I do know that he does get harassment from various authorities um, that are tapping into his stuff on a regular basis. And as such, it's a difficult one to deal with. At the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, he hasn't committed any crime. As such, why is he getting harassed? Because I can understand people thinking, well, he's racist or this or that. That's your viewpoint. But then I'd ask, what data have you got? Where do you drag that information from? Because the, the, the thing for me is I'm trying to contact him to get this information and validate. Is it a racism issue? Or is it a problem with this or a problem with that? And the findings behind it. But if you block the media, well, the communication lines there, there is a problem. There is a serious problem. Um, because I understand some of the stuff he's talking about. It doesn't matter if I agree or disagree. It's not that that's the issue. It's the same as the bit he was doing about Speaker's Corner. Um, I can understand that Speaker's Corner has been a place where you can be allowed to speak from your own opinions and whatever. I have no problem with it. Words don't hurt people. Lies hurt people. False media hurts people. Um, and I just wanted to sort of get hold of him to communicate and see how what why he f has objections against XYZ, etc. Um, so it's a bit strange that you can't even get an email to him. That's one of the weirdest things I've come across. The only person I know I cannot get hold of are an email. Um, but if you're asking me what do I think about some of the stuff he talks about, I'd have to say I'd have to talk from my viewpoint because I haven't actually spent enough time with him to actually understand him as a person. Um, but if we're talking about the way things get manipulated by the media and the police, etc., he's got a very good point. I've spent time with organizations and I know exactly what goes on with how things get pushed in the media. The BBC relating to do the black people get enough news coverage relating to stabbings in London um, or, well, just generally, was pushed out because of the large numbers of stabbings in London. But the point being is they were trying to make out that the media was racist, when the reality is it's politically correct. The reason it's politically correct is that black on black crime, they don't really report because they like to suppress that media. And some police officials I've spoken to years ago about it, they actually said it was to not put fear into the public. Um, but at the same time, if it was a white guy stabbing a black guy, it would be in the press, without a doubt. Um, and the point being is the new suppression is because politically correct, you would have to admit there is some problems within certain groups, within certain cultures, and the figures are already there. 
the figures already tell you how much crime is committed by certain entities within the United Kingdom and their social backgrounds, etc. My point being is, I look at it from an analysis point of view, and the facts are there. So I'm not going to say, well, this or this. I'm saying just go and read the facts yourself. You, I think the if you went to Wikipedia, you can actually pull up some of the police statistics relating to violence and gang violence, etc., and get your own information. I'd also say that Scotland went through this um, many moons ago when my, my father was a kid. Because I think there was over a thousand gangs in uh, Scotland at one time. Uh, sorry, in Glasgow at one time. Um, but a lot of things have moved on since then. I'm still There's still gangs there, but it's nowhere near what it used to be. But even then, you'll still get media suppression. So I do understand that from that side. The relationship with the media and the grooming stuff that goes on, I understand that as well. Because the when you hear the media talk about it, they'll say, well, if it was this specific crime, then it's more white males, da da da. And I seen on Tommy's interview a while back, well, last week I think it was, um, they says, yeah, I agree with that. But what we're talking about is these cases here, which are the fact that these people are going into other people's um, communities and specifically targeting white white females, um, which is very, very different. But the worst bit of that is the media and police suppression. And this is why I've got an interest. It's not it's not the political, the around races or whatever. It's the political suppression and the media suppression that I'm interested in because quite simply highlighting these facts helps people understand that the media that they're being served up on a 24-7 basis is skewed beyond belief. And this is why I'm in crypto. This is why I like blockchain technology. This is why I like decentralization because there will be a point where they won't be able to shut things down because quite simply it's so decentralized, it's everywhere. And there is no on off switch of a server in a server hub somewhere. There will be no IP blocking or whatever. There will be no manipulation possible because the information is spread equally, fairly, and out there. And that's why I want to get hold of Tommy Robinson, just have a chat. Um, but the point being is, I could get hold of him. So. I think it'd be an interesting conversation to have with him anyway. I'd be interested in that. But maybe Peter, since he sends me so many videos, can actually turn around and put me in touch with him. Um, because I've got, I've got to say, I understand a lot of these things. I do understand them. Um, the guys that worked with me probably about a decade, more than a decade ago, uh, they'd come in from, I think they'd come in from Kosovo. Um, they had arrived in the UK illegally. First port of call was the mosques. And in the mosques, they could organize them passports and other things, because a lot of stuff goes on in the middle of the night. Um, there was a lot of videos, because we're friends anyway, so we talk about this stuff anyway. But, but that's one of the things I will say. I do openly ask people things. I have no problem with that. And I do think that's one of the problems that society has these days. People are scared to ask questions. Um, but like Ilya, Ilya and Gertie were actually saying, is inside the mosques, you would actually be approached like when you're sleeping on the floor, because that's when they first arrived, they, that was their first port of call. People come around and offer you passports for like 200 pounds. And then in the middle of the night, they were watching, they, they put videos on about the Chechnyan war and uh, Kashmir. Stuff that gets suppressed in the media. And that's why I have a concern about this sort of stuff, because if you're burying it, you're not dealing with it. Um, but it, if I man, mention Edward, Edward I worked with in Norfolk and Suffolk. Edward come out of Zimbabwe, um, the old British Rhodesia, and he'd been in the UK since I think 84. But the point is he has a lot of connections with Zimbabwe. And because he's the first black person I've met from Zimbabwe, I wanted to get his input on it because I wanted to ask him what he thought about the white farmers. And I remember the day I mentioned that in the office, the whole office just went Shoop. Nobody wanted to speak. At the same time, they're hoping that the conversation would just move on to something else. But Edward, 
as I suspected, already had his own viewpoint, but nobody asks him. You know, at the end of the day, these things are important to understand what's going on with places. And in this case, what he'd actually said is like where he'd been developing his farm. The neighbor had stripped all the, the pipe work and all the irrigation system out and sold it scrap metal to buy a 4x4. Because like it says, they drive around like they're millionaires, but next year there's nothing. And it frustrated him because obviously he's got a Western perspective because he lives in the West and he looks and sees this stuff going on in his own country. And he's frustrated with it. But there is that dilemma where were the white farmers bad or good? And it's a it's one of those ones he couldn't really answer because economically it was better for the country but was it better for the people which is the bit he couldn't really couldn't really answer because he he had issues with other people and isn't in the area as you see the state of Zimbabwe now and that was the problem it's just been an asset stripped um, and that's why he had frustrations but that wasn't caused by the white farming the white farming had put the infrastructure in there. But would that have made any difference if they had never existed? That's another debate. But anyway, there's a prime example of having those sort of conversations. Hard questions, hard hard things to talk about, hard pills to swallow. But if you don't have those questions, you let the media decide for you what is right and wrong. In the same way in any of these conflict zones, there is no middle ground. They're only bad or good. In the same way, they form these massive groups that could be several hundred different entities fighting each other for different reasons. Suddenly, they're all bad. We are good, they're bad. And there's no actual understanding of the complexities around the different people involved in these things or the fact that we could actually be attacking the wrong ones because that means you have to deal with blowback, fallout, and actually do conscientious decision making instead. If everyone's bad, don't worry about it. But that's a topic for another day. Thanks for watching.